Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today on the show what we're going to do is read vernier calipers. Vernier calipers are pretty nifty because you can read things to a very high precision, namely distances. So, for example, in this video we're going to read things to the hundreds of centimeters places, which is way better than you could ever do with a ruler, even though the instruments are used to measure the same thing, distance. So, we're going to measure the outer diameter of a coffee mug, where you use these big claws on the front, the inner diameter of a coffee mug, and to measure the inner diameter or anything with vernier calipers, you use these little back claws. And finally, we're going to see how fat our squirrel is, and we're going to measure the squirrel belly diameter, which is probably the most important example. So stick with us, and we're going to do three examples of reading vernier calipers to the correct number of sig figs. All right, first let's just orient you on some vocabulary I'm going to be using in this video. One is the main scale. That refers to the scale on the actual ruler, the thing that sort of holds still. And then there's the vernier scale, and that's just these ticks right here. And they're on the thing that slides. So on the slider, we have the vernier scale. And on the ruler, we have what we call the main scale. And these two scales are going to combine to give us a much more precise measurement. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you do that. All right. So here we're reading the outer diameter of our coffee mug. And there's two steps, really, to reading these calipers. First is we want to use the tick on the far left of the slider, that is on the vernier scale, to make our initial measurement. We're going to read our first few digits that way. And the very last digit, we're going to read with all the ticks on the slider. So follow me and I'll show you how to do this. So for step one, we're going to look just at this leftmost tick here. That's it. The tick, other ticks don't matter on the vernier scale. And we're going to see where it lines up with on our ruler. So here's our ruler. Notice that this guy is nine here and that's actually nine centimeters. And then we have 10 centimeters over here. And that means right here, even though we can't see it, we have eight centimeters. And that's important to see if you wanna make the reading of your first few digits correctly. I'm gonna erase some of this just to give us some more uh, viewing room. So this tick lines up right there. Notice this slightly taller tick in between eight and nine is gonna be 8.5. And each one of the little ticks here are gonna represent 0.1. So this line falls right here between 8.5 and 8.6. And that means that the first two things we're going to write down are 8.5. And now we're going to fill in this last digit, and that's going to be in centimeters. So the first two digits are pretty straightforward. It's basically like using a ruler. You just see where that left tick lines up, and that tells you the first two digits. But how are we going to get the next digits? That's where the vernier scale really comes into play. So let's erase this mess. What we're gonna look for in step two is which one of our vernier ticks, all the ticks on the slider, line up exactly with a tick on the main scale. So what we wanna do is we look and we see, oh, does this tick line up directly? No, it's in between them. Does this tick line up directly? No, it's in between them. That one's getting close, even closer. That one looks pretty dead on. That one looks a little off to the left, a little off to the left, more off to the left, off to the left. So you can see that only one of those actually lines up directly. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of a judgment call as to which one lines up the most, but only one or two should look like they line up. And what we see here is that this guy lines up the best. It lines up perfectly with the ticks on the main scale. So basically, if you think about the finger, our fingers as being the ticks on each side of the scale, we're looking for where the fingers come together exactly like this. So we don't want them slightly mismatched. That's not where they're matching. And now we're going to number them. So the numbers on the vernier scale go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then finally 10. Since our fourth one lines up, we're going to write a 4 right there. So our measurement is 8.54 centimeters. So let's do two more examples. These ones should go faster now that you're sort of oriented. All right, this one's the inner diameter of our coffee mug. Once again, we're going to look at the leftmost tick. We see that it lines up with the first tick past seven. So here's seven. And then we see this guy is where it lines up. That's 7.1. So that tells us our first two digits are 7.1 centimeters. And we need to figure out what we want to write at the end of that. Well, now we need to look at where they line up exactly. And here's where some people run into problems. So it looks like this one lines up pretty much exactly, right? But it also sort of looks like that one lines up exactly. So which one is it? Is it zero or is it 10? Well, to distinguish between these two, look at your initial measurement. Notice that since those ticks, my leftmost tick there lines up pretty much exactly with 7.1, 
I know that it's not 7.18 or 7.19. I know it has to be 7.10, 7.11, something like that. And that means I'm going to look only at the ticks on the left side of the scale to sort of be a tiebreaker. So that means that I'm going to take this leftmost tick that lines up directly. So it's my very first tick, zero, that lines up. And that's going to give me 7.10 centimeters for the inner diameter of my coffee mug. All right, one more example. Now we got our squirrel belly, super important stuff here. And again, we're going to look at the leftmost tick and see where it lines up. Well, that would be my 3.5 tick right here, this big guy. And I know that secretly 3 centimeters is hidden over here. So that's falling between 3.4 and 3.5. That means that my first two digits are 3.4, because it's taller than 3.4, bigger than 3.4. And we need to figure out this last digit. How do we do that? That's step two, where we look and we see what digits line up exactly. That one certainly doesn't line up. Doesn't line up. Doesn't line up. Getting closer. That one looks close. That one looks pretty much spot on. And again, here you could see, like, maybe you could select that one or that one. So some people will disagree when they read these, but you should get pretty close to the same answer. So I'm going to take this one as being the one that lines up right here. And then again, we got to count. Zero, one, two, three, four five, six. So that means this digit should be six. And I'm going to add centimeters. So my uh, squirrel belly's diameter is 3.46 centimeters. Seems like he's been eating too many nuts. He's got to cut back on those. So hopefully you can see now how you read vernier calipers to the correct number of significant figures. They're a little tricky at first, but once you get them down, they're super useful measuring tools. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Click on the Real Chemistry icon below to subscribe or check out another one of my videos. You can always visit my channel to see my full collection. Thanks for watching.